Pikmin is easily one of Nintendo's most colorful and unique franchises. By introducing elements of real-time strategy and blending them into a puzzle-filled adventure, many gamers put it into a category all on its own. And what makes the game iconic beyond its mechanics is the mysterious and sometimes dark story unlike any major Nintendo IP to date. So how did such a strange game come to be? And what makes it so memorable and beloved? We're here to give you the inside scoop, so get ready because I'm Nikki with Super Coin Crew where it's non-stop Nintendo and we're rallying up all all of our colorful plant friends to bring both diehard fans and newbies alike the 107 facts you should know all about Nintendo's Pikmin. Let's get started. Number 1. Pikmin made its first reveal at E3 2001 with a presentation by Shigeru Miyamoto and Colin Reed. This came alongside a video showing the games that were still in development including Luigi's Mansion, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and Metroid Prime. Number 2. Olimar and the Pikmin crash landed in Japan on October 26, 2001. This was followed by a North American release in December and a European slash Australian release in June of the following year. This makes it one of the earliest games released in the GameCube's lifespan. Number 3. While North America and Europe's Pikmin box art features more action, the Japanese box art went with a different direction. Instead of a red bulb orb scooping up Pikmin with its mouth, the box simply features the three Pikmin types, blue, yellow, red, in front of a yellow background with flowers along with the subtitle, Raised from Seed. Number 4. Pikmin was developed by Nintendo EAD and more recently, Nintendo EAD Group Number 4, which is responsible for most of the games in the new Super Mario Bros. series and the rest of the Pikmin series. Hiroyuki Kumura, the producer for most of the games developed by Nintendo EAD Group Number 4, also co-produced Super Mario Maker, which you all know we love. Number 5. Pikmin's gameplay was based off of a GameCube tech demo known as Super Mario 128, which featured many Mini Marios dismantling an 8-bit Mario. The Mini Marios would pick up the block that represented a pixel of the 8-bit Mario and carry the blocks away. The tech demo was used to showcase the GameCube's ability to utilize multiple AIs. This base gameplay eventually evolved to incorporate the Pikmin. Number 6. In an interview with Nintendo Power, Miyamoto revealed that Pikmin was originally going to be a game called Adam and Eve. The premise of the game was to watch as two characters develop through life. The player acted as a god-type character, and based on the player's visions, the two characters could make a nest and have children or continuously fight. Number 7. While the initial idea for Adam and Eve featured two characters, the number of characters soon increase in number. Development eventually shifted to something more akin to Pikmin when the goal of the game was questioned. The developers also desired to control a large group of characters using the newly developed C-Stick. Number 8. The size of Pikmin was chosen after several other aspects of the game were created. Miyamoto and the team envisioned a primitive world featuring lots of villages and fights against mammoths. Everything was pictured in a bigger scale. It was ultimately decided that the world would be based on something more familiar. Number 9. The concept for Pikmin came from a time when Shigeru Miyamoto took interest in gardening. One day, he was relaxing on his patio and noticed ants marching by his feet, carrying leaves to their nest. For a moment, he imagined what the scene would be like if the task was done by tiny people instead of ants. Number 10. The first iteration of Pikmin designs was colored black, like ants, and featured no facial features. Colin Reed, the lead programmer, said he didn't really like them at first, but once they added colors like red, yellow, and blue, his opinion changed. Number 11. At one point, the team believed the Pikmin should be about 30 to 50 centimeters in size, or around the size of a house cat. They were plant-like creatures after all. Number 12. It wasn't until the dev team came up with the idea to pick up and toss the Pikmin that they had a final direction to steer the game. Number 13. During development, there were plans to make Pikmin all different body types and sizes, like fat, tall, small, etc., but this didn't make it into the final cut. While the original Pikmin only varied in color, the future games in the series ended up featuring Pikmin of different sizes. Those sizes were limited to specific types of Pikmin, the purple, white, flying, and rock Pikmin. Number 14. Olimar, the character controlled by the player, wasn't added until later in development. In the beginning, Miyamoto even believed that the idea of a player character wouldn't be interesting, since in the original development, they used Pikmin as a weapon. Later iterations made the Pikmin more companion-like, with their use leaning towards tools rather than weapons. Number 15. There were originally plans to make a system to allow players to manage Pikmin in a more in-depth level, like picking favorites and rotating out tired Pikmin. However, they felt like these features made the gameplay too complex, so the team decided to tone down the features and make it a little more simple. Number 16. Each Pikmin has an individual AI. In large groups, you can see that some Pikmin will choose not to work and stand idle, not doing anything. Pikmin also react differently in certain situations and look around in different directions. This was done so that the player felt that the Pikmin had some sort of free will. The development team also had the ability to make the Pikmin act more freely, but they chose against it as they thought it would frustrate the player more than help them. Number 17. It was more important to Miyamoto 
that the Pikmin life cycles were prominent in the game. It was his intention to show children that in nature, even though characters die, they are reborn and a new beginning follows. Number 18. The scenery found in Pikmin also took inspiration from the mountains and gardens around Miyamoto's house. Number 19. Miyamoto once stated that the world of Pikmin takes place in a world 250 million years in the future after the extinction of the human race. Wait, the scenery was inspired from Miyamoto's house, but the game takes place in the future? Miyamoto is a time traveler, confirmed. Number 20. Pikmin's graphics were highly developed for the time as the self-sustaining ecosystem is constantly in motion around you, making the world feel truly alive. Number 21. Masamichi Abe noted that the red bulborb was the only creature slash concept to make it through all of the stages of development as it was originally the previously mentioned mammoth. Number 22. According to Miyamoto, creatures weren't frightening at all until they started creating ones that ate Pikmin. Reed even pointed out that there was once a creature that would do its own thing while a Pikmin leg stuck out of its mouth, but said that he, of course, removed it. Thankfully, because that sounds heart-wrenching. Number 23. The bell at the end of each day was inspired by melodies used in some rural areas in Japan. They would symbolize the coming of sunset and the time to go home. Miyamoto also compared the end of day Pikmin roundup to a teacher rounding up students. Number 24. Pikmin's music was composed by Hajime Wakai. Wakai continued his work with music for Pikmin 2, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and Nintendogs. He sure does have a knack for calm and soothing tunes. Number 25. A soundtrack for Pikmin titled Pikmin World was released in May 2002. It contains 36 tracks for your listening pleasure. Unfortunately, it was only released in Japan, but that's what Amazon is for. Number 26. As of this year, Pikmin has sold 1.63 million units, which is a bit higher than its sequels. Number 27. The commercial for Pikmin in the United States parodied several types of nature documentaries complete with a European host. Number 28. In Japan, Nintendo released a series of commercials for Pikmin featuring the song I Know Uta by the group Strawberry Flower. Number 29. I Know Uta is told through the perspective of the Pikmin and has some pretty sad tones to it. Several lines in the song roughly translate to, quote, uprooted, we follow only you, alone, today we'll carry, fight, multiply, and be eaten again, abandoned, we'll meet up again and be thrown, but we'll follow you until the end of our strength. Wow, that is kind of sad. Number 30. The song garnered a lot of attention and became one of the most recognizable and popular songs in Japan at the time. I Know Uta's single CD did remarkably well selling over 630,000 copies, which is just over the sales of Pikmin, the game it was advertising. It was considered a media phenomena selling equally across multiple age groups and music tastes. Number 31. As an ode to the success of I Know Uta, if the player gathers 20 of each Pikmin color in Pikmin 2, they will bunch up and start humming the famous song. Number 30. Pikmin features several character designers, such as Daisuke Kageyama, who worked on The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Tatomi Miyakawa, whose work you've probably seen in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, Junji Mori, who did some designs in Pokemon Stadium, and Kenta Motokura, a lead character designer on Super Mario Galaxy. Basically, they're good at what they do. Number 33. The script for Pikmin was written by Motoi Okamoto, who went on to work on titles such as Luigi's Mansion, Super Mario Sunshine, and Pikmin 2. Number 34. While Shigeru Miyamoto acted as producer for Pikmin, the late Hiroshi Yamauchi worked as the executive producer, marking one of the over 200 games he's been credited in. Number 35. When the Nintendo logo pops up during the start of the game, a Pikmin says, Pikmin. But on rare occasions, you hear them say, Woo! or Sigh. There are even times when an unknown Japanese word is spoken. Number 36. If for some reason you're spending some time on the title screen, you can spot the name Toyota. This is reference to Tokihiko Toyota, the screen designer for Pikmin. Number 37. The game starts with the protagonist, Captain and Olimar cruising through space on a personal vacation when a rogue asteroid collides with his ship. Losing control, Olimar crash lands on an eerily familiar planet. Upon waking up, he realizes his ship has been completely destroyed and that the planet, dubbed PNF-404 in Pikmin 3, has an atmosphere filled with poisonous oxygen that his life support can only filter for 30 days. Knowing this, Olimar sets off to recover any ship parts he can find. Number 38. A day in the world of Pikmin lasts about 13 real world minutes. So don't waste your time lolly gagging and start grabbing those ship parts. Number 39. Olimar's Japanese name is pronounced and spelled as Orima, an anagram of Mario. Number 40. Olimar became a playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Brawl using his Pikmin during battle. Number 41. Olimar's home planet is named Hakate. The name actually comes from the address of Nintendo's Japanese headquarters, 11-1 Hokutate Cho, Kambitoba, Minimiku, Kyoto, Japan, which were relocated to in the year 2000. Number 42. Before Olimar set off on his voyage, his wife made him a famous Hakate 
imitation soup made with quote three large onions and hundreds of miniature red, yellow, and blue carrots. Why does that sound familiar? Number 43. Oh right, Oliver named Pikmin after the colorful Pick Pick carrots of his home world. Number 44. The name of Oliver's ship is the SS Dolphin, which happens to be a reference to the GameCube's development code name Dolphin. Number 45. Oliver stands at an impressive 1.9 centimeters tall and 3.81 centimeters if you count his suit and antenna. That's roughly the height of a GameCube memory card. Number 46. Pikmin are around Oliver's height, standing at an enormous 2.54 centimeters from leaf to feet. You know, if it weren't for that antenna, the Pikmin would actually be taller than little Oliver. Number 47. Red Pikmin have noses, yellow Pikmin have ears, and blue Pikmin have mouths. According to Olimar, the blue Pikmin also have gills on their cheeks, but they aren't clearly visible to the player on their in-game model. Number 48. Pikmin nests are referred to as, quote, onions by Olimar because they resemble Pogotation onions. When Olimar stumbles across an actual onion in Pikmin 2, he labels it as an onion replica to avoid confusion. Number 49. There is no limit to the amount of Pikmin you can store in the onions. They're basically a TARDIS minus the time traveling. Number 50. Blue Pikmin can actually act as lifeguards. While red and yellow Pikmin flail around in the water, blue Pikmin are immune to drowning. If there are Pikmin drowning, blue Pikmin can go in the water and throw the drowning Pikmin back to land. Number 51. If yellow Pikmin are carrying bomb rocks when it's time to return to the onion, the bomb rocks are left right under the pillar of light. What, you thought they'd actually bring a bomb rock into the onion? Number 52. Yellow Pikmin capabilities vary more than any other Pikmin in the series. Their powers change from carrying bomb rocks to surviving electricity than digging the fastest. Number 53. The natural progression of Pikmin are as follows. Leaf, bud, and lastly, flower. There are several ways Pikmin can progress through their stages, like drinking nectar, which will immediately bring them to flower. Number 54. Leaving Pikmin in the ground without plucking them will level them up to a flower in time. It's said that they extract nutrients from the soil just like real plants. Number 55. While leaving Pikmin in the ground can be a good thing, be cautious. Leaving them in the ground for too long will cause them to revert back to the leaf stage. Again, just like any flowering plant in real life. Number 56. There's a random chance that Pikmin will decrease in level if they get knocked down. Number 57. When Pikmin are killed, a spirit rises from where it died. In the original Pikmin, the color of the spirit is always bluish white, regardless of what type of Pikmin are killed. Number 58. When one type of Pikmin is completely extinct, the onion will put out new seeds, making it impossible for Pikmin to go completely extinct. Olimar finds this fascinating, and so do we. If only dinosaurs had their own onion. Number 58. If a player loses all of his Pikmin in a single day, the day will end and a cutscene will play. Each of the onions will produce a single seed. Number 60. If you're tired of individually going up to Pikmin in the ground to pluck them, you can just repeatedly tap the A button. Olimar will automatically walk up to each of the Pikmin at a single onion and pluck them. Number 61. The red Pikmin are the first to be discovered in Pikmin. This turned into a trend for all Pikmin games where red is always the first type to be discovered. Number 62. Just like red Pikmin, a trend started with blue Pikmin. Pikmin as well. In Pikmin, the blue Pikmin are the third and final Pikmin to be discovered. Likewise, all of the games in the series have the blue Pikmin as the last type to be discovered. Number 63. When some enemies are defeated, pellets pop up from their bodies. Director Shigafumi Hino stated that whatever the enemies ate transforms into nutrients, which stay in their stomach in the form of pellets. Now what I want to know is why ship parts pop up from them as well. I guess they can't be digested. Number 64. If you pay real close attention to the spots on the back of the bowl boards and bowl beers, you can see that they pulsate or fluctuate in size. Yeah, when I have nothing better to do, I like to kick back, relax, and stare at bowl board backs. Number 65. Actually, when you pause the game with the spotty bowl beer on the screen, the spots on its back continue to pulsate as if the screen wasn't paused. Number 66. The Smoky Prog, an optional boss only available during the first 15 days, is the only poisonous enemy found in Pikmin. Since the white Pikmin don't exist in the original game, there are no Pikmin resistant to the Smoky Prog's gas, which kills Pikmin instantly. Number 67. If you manage to defeat the Smoky Prog, chances are you lost a crazy amount of Pikmin in the process. Luckily, returning the Smoky Prog's remains to an onion rewards a whopping 100 Pikmin. Number 68. The enemy reel at the end of Pikmin states that the Smoky Prog is thought to be a Mamuta that didn't develop properly through its larva stage. Interestingly enough, the Smoky Prog is very hostile while the Mamuta is generally docile. Two complete opposites. Number 69. The impact site is one of the two areas that has an 
an optional boss, the other being the Distant Spring. In the impact site, you'll encounter the Mamuta and the Gulix, while the Distant Spring gives you a chance to encounter the aforementioned Smoky Prog. Number 70. Been to the impact site but haven't seen either of the optional bosses? Well, the Gulix only appears on odd numbered days, while even numbered days are reserved for the Mamuta, starting on day 8. Number 71. The Mamuta has barkings on its wrists that are identical to the patterns that appear on onions. Number 72. The burrowing Snagrit appeared in Pikmin beta footage but had a slightly different all white design. Number 73. The Positron Generator is a very powerful electric generator and is considered a mandatory part for the SS Dolphin, but Olimar uses it to heat up instant noodles. A super essential ship part indeed. Number 74. The Water Dumple has a pair of whiskers in Pikmin but they were removed in the sequels. Number 75. The scientific name for the Water Dumple is Ichthyosa felinus which loosely translates to catfish. Sure, that thing is a catfish, okay. Number 76. The puff stool is known to spray its spores to turn Pikmin into mushroom Pikmin. These mushroom Pikmin, which lose their facial features and turn dark purple in color, aren't considered an entirely different type of Pikmin, but rather a different form that retains any attributes it had before its transformation. Number 77. Though mushroom Pikmin are unique variants to your standard companions, it isn't a great idea to seek them out. Once the puff stool spores enter the bodies of your friendly little helpers, they turn hostile towards Olimar, and it only takes them approximately 200 hits to take them down. Number 78. Olimar named the Bulborb and Bulbear after their resemblance to his dog, Bulby. Grub Dog family name was also inspired by the pup. Number 79. You might be thinking that Bulbars look nothing like dogs, but they actually do. Similar to Earth Dogs? Not really. Similar to Hocation Dogs? Definitely. We get our first look at Bulby the Hocation Dog in one of Olimar's voyage logs, and the resemblance is uncanny. Number 80. Olimar has a wife, a daughter, and a son, all of whom have no understanding of how money works. Number 81. When you collect the Positron Generator, Olimar notes that you can get shocked upon approaching the generator, but Olimar and the Pikmin seem completely fine and unharmed. Number 82. According to Olimar, the Eternal Fuel Dynamo is capable of giving an unlimited supply of energy so he doesn't have to worry about saving electricity. This makes the Positron Generator a redundant piece of equipment, well, unless you make a lot of instant noodles. Number 83. There are two ship parts that were given to Olimar by his children, Libra by his daughter and Sagittarius by his son. During Olimar's monologue for Libra, he says that it's named after my daughter's astrological sign. This implies that even on Hucketate, they believe in astrology. Now I wonder what Olimar's horoscope said the day his ship was hit by that asteroid. Number 84. The UV lamp is the game's slightest ship part. You only need a total of 10 Pikmin to carry it. Number 85. The Gluon Drive is Pikmin's heaviest ship part. Well, in the American version at least. It requires 50 Pikmin to carry, and it's a mandatory ship part meaning that you definitely need it to get Olimar off the planet. Number 86. Think you had a rough time keeping enough Pikmin during the final level? Think again! While the American release of Pikmin lets players carry the secret safe with 40 Pikmin, the Japanese release required a whopping 85. That's insane. Number 87. The Pearly Clam Clamp is the only enemy in possession of a ship heart that has the part visible before it is defeated. Number 88. Remember how Pikmin takes place in a distant future in which humans are no more? Well, one of the ship parts is a Geiger counter. Olimar doesn't seem to know what it is, but he does know that the needle constantly moves. Geiger counters are used to measure radiation, implying that there's radiation everywhere on PNF-404. Number 89. Though PNF-404 has not been officially confirmed to be a post-apocalyptic Earth, it's the favored fan theory with the most supporting evidence. Number 90. Holding down the D-pad for the GameCube controller, or two on the Wii remote, makes Olimar lie down and Pikmin carry him back to their onion. When he rises up into the onion, he doesn't go in. Instead, he bounces off the bottom, which releases lights that burst in the air, kind of like fireworks. Very tiny fireworks. Number 91. It's worth noting that when Olimar is lying down, he is invincible to many types of damage, which can be useful in some situations. How did I not know this? Number 92. Though it's 100% useless, if you spam the button to make Olimar lie down, he'll actually start hopping around, which is pretty funny. Number 93. In Pikmin, Olimar's logbook reviews progress, but did you know that it will also review a lack of progress? There is a full set of entries programmed in the event that no progress is made, some of which can only be seen if the player never leaves the impact site. Number 94. You can also get an idea of how far into the game you are by checking the lights on Olimar's ship. The two lights on the front of the ship will change colors depending on Olimar's progress with ship repairs. When he first crashes at the impact site, the lights are off. They are red when he gets to the Forest of Hope, yellow the Forest Naval, green for the Distant Spring, blue for the Final Trial, and finally purple when you return the secret safe. Number 95. Failing to collect at least 25 parts leaves Olimar with a sad fate. After taking off, the SS Dolphin fails to reach space 
space, leaving Olimar on the planet without a functioning life support system. Interestingly enough, when the Pikmin take Olimar to their onion, Olimar doesn't bounce off the bottom of the onion, or even get absorbed, but instead is spit out by the onion, turning him into a potential Pikmin. Olimar or Pikmar? Number 96. You don't need to collect all the parts for Olimar to make it back into space. Collecting 25 to 29 parts will give you the good ending, which has Olimar take off and head for home, leaving the Pikmin behind on their world. Number 97. If you collect all 30 ship parts, you're rewarded with the perfect ending. In this ending, Olimar's ship is tailed by several onions as it's leaving the planet, with onion colors we haven't seen anywhere in the game. Look closer and you can spot orange, pink, gray, brown, green, and cyan onions. Number Number 98. It's actually possible to complete Pikmin in just 6 in-game days. Fans consider this the 6 day challenge, or 6 day run, and requires charging through all of the stages, defeating the final boss, and gathering all 30 ship parts. If that sounds crazy, how about adding in the fact that it has been completed in under an hour? Number 99. Pikmin became part of Nintendo's player choice line in 2003. Number 100. Pikmin inspired an entire franchise with two sequels, Pikmin 2 releasing in 2004, and Pikmin 3 releasing in 2003. 13. Also, an appearance in Nintendo Land, Nintendo e-reader games, as well as a few Pikmin short movies. Number 101. Pikmin was re-released on the Wii under Nintendo's new play control line. This re-release gives players a new control scheme using the Wii remote to move the cursor. This, in turn, allows the player to throw Pikmin distances you couldn't reach with the GameCube controller. Number 102. In an interview with GameSpot, Shigafumi Hino stated that the devs felt the Wii's motion controls were the ideal setup for Pikmin. Simplicity was always their goal with Pikmin's controls, so the Wii Remote made for a much more natural experience. Number 103. This updated version of Pikmin came with several changes including more resilient Pikmin that can stay alive a bit longer when drowning or on fire. Number 104. A quality of life change made to new play control Pikmin was an added save feature that allowed players to replay days that have already passed. Number 105. The SS Dolphin and an Onion make an appearance in the 2010 version of Nintendo Monopoly. Number 106. In Mario Golf, off Toadstool Tour, you might notice something a little different with the flowers near Peach's Castle. Look closely and you'll find Pikmin hiding in the flower patches. Number 107. If you have Pikmin save data on your memory card, you can unlock the Captain Olimar trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee. This is the only known way of unlocking that trophy. Boom! There you have it, 107 facts you should know all about Pikmin. You're now brimming with enough Pikmin knowledge to set out on your own otherworldly adventures, but before you go, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know what we should cover next in our 107 fact videos. Be sure to join the coin for non-stop Nintendo and thanks for watching.